Right, well this is a video looking at Acts 17 verses 1 to 15 for this coming Sunday and I've put the passage on the page. Uh, just by way of recap though, first before we do that, um, here is a, um, a map um, and um, it be, I think it's good to, to sort of use maps because I think it helps tell the story of where we're at. So we're in a kind of um, a continuous um continuous story and so uh, here's the map of the mediterranean i mean you could, you could ask the kids where have you been on holiday <laughs> have you been to any of these places and of course the nations current nations are on there which um, are not the nations of the time but we're going to zoom into this area for this missionary journey that paul's on traveling around telling people about jesus because the gospel is for all and um here's my zoomed in map without the countries on um and um they started in antioch well they came from jerusalem then to antioch and then uh, they traveled through different regions of what we call turkey but the spirit wouldn't let them that was Acts 16 the first few verses they got to troas at the sea they had the vision of the man from macedonia in northern greece saying come and help us so they went over didn't they and they went to philippi eventually and that's where we were last week with uh, lydia and then uh, last week particularly the slave girl and the jailer um and we see the the opposition to the gospel which we've seen already in acts but we in this series that was the first time we saw it and then um, they they head off and then um, they go uh, this um, this time they end up uh, somewhere else so they go to uh, Thessalonica and uh, that's where we find themselves um, in um, in chapter 17 verse 1 that's what it says so let's let's have a look at the passage and um, see that so um, there we go so Paul and his companions had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia. They came to Thessalonica, that's where we are. And um, uh, lots of interesting things we can reflect on. But we'll try and just spot the main themes because the same things are keep being said again and again as we go through Acts. And we don't want to just be a stuck record. We want to say some slightly different things are developing on the same theme. So we come to Thessalonica. There's a Jewish synagogue that's, that's similar to what Paul does in most places. He goes to the synagogue as was his custom. Three Sabbath days, just a little passing note. They weren't in Thessalonica very long, just three, three weekends. Um, he reasons with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. So he's using Old Testament scriptures. And the question is, what scriptures? Well, um, these would be the main ones. Psalm 16 is about the resurrection and Isaiah 53 is clearly about the cross. And we can see that in the Old Testament. There are other scriptures that also point to the um, the cross, the suffering and resurrection of Jesus. Um, but those are the two clearest ones. Um and some of the other passages in the scriptures, um, in, for example, the story of Joseph carries through this theme of death and resurrection and salvation. Um, the Passover, the you know the Exodus, um, the lamb, uh, the blood on the doorpost, all, all of these things uh, refer to the cross in some way. So I, I just put down two key ones that have already been used in Acts, actually, to refer to Jesus as the suffering Messiah, but also the risen Messiah. Um so, and this is from the scriptures, okay, just to point that out. Um, so this Jesus I am proclaiming to you as the Messiah. So basically he's telling the Jews, so there's no Christians in Thessalonica in northern Greece in this city. There's Jews, um, Jews all over the place, uh, been dispersed as time has gone on. Um, so that he's saying, that look, we now know who the Messiah is, it's Jesus. And uh, some Jews are persuaded and they join. Uh, lots of uh, non-Jews as well, god and Greeks, a few prominent women. So quite a mixed group. We've, seen, we've said we've seen mixed groups already, haven't we? However, there's also opposition. Some Jews jealous and um, they um, do what's <coughs> sort of similar to what happened in Philippi, this kind of false charges, robs, riots. It's sort of, you know, there's no threat to them really, but they, they, um, they sit, clearly act as if it's dangerous, this Christian faith. Uh, Jason's a believer. They're searching uh, in his house for Paul and Silas, uh, they couldn't find them. They, they attacked Jason. Um, these men, here's an exaggeration. These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here. Um, they're defying Caesar's decrees, saying there is another king, one called Jesus. Now, Jesus is very clearly saying my kingdom is not of this world. So he, he's not a threat to Caesar in the political sense, um, although uh, it's well certainly not trying to take Caesar's place. But there is a sense in which he takes Caesar's place in terms of our loyalty. And so there is a half truth here, isn't there? But it's not it's not going to be cause it's not going to upset civilization, Roman civilization following Jesus. In fact, Christians should be model citizens as Paul would go else elsewhere. Anyway, side point. So um th there's turmoil and um uh, anyway, uh, that's that. Um 
And then um, verse 10, they send them away. Paul and Silas are sent away at night time to Berea. So let's 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 find our map. Um, let's go back to our map. And uh, they go from Thessalonica a bit further around the corner to Berea. There's Berea. Somewhere, uh, this is rough. Roughly, I'm not saying it's GPS accurate, this, but um, roughly accurate. Um, and I would I would draw this. I'd, you get a big map, draw the journey, draw, draw where they're going. That, that kind of adds to it in, in, in that way. So they've gone to Berea. What happens in Berea? Let's, let's have a look at the passage again. Um, so they arrive in Berea. They do the same thing. They go to a Jewish synagogue. And it says the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. Why? Because they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures. Okay, so this is my repeating word thing going on here. I, I mean, I, I, really important to spot repeating words if you can. We've had scriptures mentioned in both places here. Um, and they're eager. They do it every day to see if what Paul said was true. Okay, so they're not just taking what Paul's word for it as, as gospel. They're, they're checking that what Paul is saying is what the scriptures are saying. And that's what Paul did in Thessalonica. He explains and proves that Messiah um, rose from the dead. So there's a, there's a rational element to this. It's not just it feel, a feel-good message. It's based on the Bible, the scriptures. This is Old Testament scripture to you and me, and the Jews, but it's the scriptures nonetheless. And so as a result, many of them believed. And uh, it's, it's, <laughs> do you see the same, the same sort of pattern here? I'll just use a different highlighting color. Excuse me while I change my color. We've got... We've got a mixed uh, a mixed group um, here, so I'm just going to um, highlight that there. Um, the same sort of result, um, and then you've got the same opposition: the Jews in Thessalonica. So there isn't any opposition originating in Berea, but Thessalonica, about forty miles away, they reckon. They they found out that that's what's this is what's happening in Berea, and it is the word of God. I mean, that, you know, Paul is preaching. Um, not just any old words, he's preaching God's words, uh, God's message from the Bible, uh, and they agitate the crowds. So um, th there's this opposition. I'm just going to make this a bit sort of purple, pinky opposition colour. Yeah. Um, when they're agitating and stirring up the crowds, there we go. Um, so they send Paul on, um, but put Silas and Timothy, they, for some reason they were safe. Maybe they weren't um, seen as the most dangerous. They were sort of kept kept there but paul was a, sort of the target person they sent him off and he he's going he goes to athens we'll find him next week in athens we'll get back to our map in athens and silas and timothy we're going to join him a bit later on okay so i think the main thing i the, there's there's some reoccurring things from uh, that would come again 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 actually the opposition and the belief um many different people believing and the opposition that highlighted there but it's the yellow bits that I think is 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 uh, emphasised here. It's about the scriptures, proving from the scriptures, and they examine the scriptures. They check that it's the Bible that's doing the work. I suppose it's Jesus, his, his living word, as even in the Old Testament, living word, Holy Spirit's words in the Old Testament, um, that are doing the work in people, and they're they're checking the Bible. So that's why I put in my theme sentence, the Bible is pretty prominent. In that, because I think that's that's the emphasis within the continuing theme of Acts, the emphasis in this passage. So, Bible-based persuasion, I've put here. I mean, change the words to make it more um, more more normal for people. But by, what I've got, Bible-based persuasion will lead to both belief and opposition. You might want to um, embellish that a bit more to be a bit more sort of focused in on the words of this passage. Um, so. Um, yeah, but it's, it's simply, it is true that there is a um, there there is a result that it polarizes. The Bible does polarize people, don't it? People love it. People don't like it. Uh, Marmites commit to the Bible's message. This is an aim for belief, even under pressure. Now, what I'm saying is, um, not only is the Bible. I mean, I suppose the the thing is when we draw lines from um, the passage to us, who are we in the passage? Are we Paul and Silas and Timothy? Paul and his companions, verse one. Or are we the hearers in Thessalonica and Berea? And I think we need to put ourselves in both places. So we need to be people who want to listen to the Bible. We need to check the Bible. We need to listen to the preacher or the uh, Bible study um, notes and think, hang on a minute, is this really what the Bible is saying? And that's why 
good um, good good speakers refer to the Bible. They get you looking at what the Bible says. They don't just make it up, and they don't just jump off the Bible into what they want to say. They let the Bible speak, and that's what we what we what we try to do at St John's. That's what we're trying to do this passage right now, and um, that's what we want to do. That's what the Bible. That's what we're told to do. That's what's going on here. So, are we people who are searching the Scriptures? Maybe even every day. There's an application here every day. Um, to, to check, um, you know, we, it will, it'll help us if we're Bible people, and we want to do a Bible ministry. So when we do evangelism, just like Paul, we want to use the Bible. Um, so there's the Word one to one as a resource that you can use for that. Just, I mean, um, we could just read a gospel. Just ask a friend, have you ever read the Bible? And lots of people are finding that's very helpful these days. So um, commit to the Bible's message, whether you're um, in both hearing it but also sharing it. The belief, even under pressure, and you will expect do expect pressure um, when we get the Bible. Lots of people, I say lots. I don't no, I wouldn't say lots, but I've met a few people in my few years at St John's who didn't like what the Bible said, and so um, they said we don't like your church, and that's to be expected. That's what this passage tells me. But the Bible also works in people to bring joy and salvation, and that has happened um, much, much more. I think in the, in the time I've been around, and I'm sure many of you have been around a lot longer than me you can see the same. Um, to to those degrees how do we get this across um recap the journey i, I i'd um I, I i would really encourage the map idea to kind of get the continuity um you, you can borrow this powerpoint if you really want to that's absolutely fine it's um, no charge um and um or, or you print out a map draw on the map where we are um and so do that um I would, um, to recap, what that we've had a diverse group of believers. We're now going to a new place. Almost like the idea of we're doing a tour. It's like a, like a I wouldn't call it a cruise because it's not all on the, on the ship, but a kind of a, a sort of a, a whirlwind tour of um, this part of the world um, that we're in, um, the Eastern Mediterranean. Um, yeah, sort of get that theme going perhaps. And... Um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd, I'd look at the passage. I'd say um, I just you could sum it up, but get them to emphasise the fact that this is the scriptures, the Bible, whatever the translation has it in. Has um, get that get that across. You could you could do it in two parts. Um, you've got um, the two two places they go to. This stop is Thessalonica. Uh, they go to another stop in Berea. You could you could say, oh, we've got a photo in this photo this time. It's it's not somebody with purple cloth. It's not somebody who's a jailer it's not a slave girl who is is free it's um it's people just reading the bible <laughs> people reading the scriptures it'd be a scroll it'd be a scroll back then of course they didn't have a full bible but it'd be scrolls i imagine and um, maybe get people looking at their scrolls that'd be the probably the the thing to the the image to go with if you wanted to pin photos onto the map say this is what we did when this is what we've seen in these places application what is the application hmm, let's think about this maybe one are we um reading our bibles daily maybe like the Bereans. um the uh checking what we believe against the bible and that could be um checking um sermon talks um our ideas and the world's ideas is what we believe really come from the bible are we just basing it on what we what we what we like and that's the truth is most people are just going with what they their gut feeling or what their intuition or just going with the flow of the culture rather than sticking by the word of god and that's that's could be something for our church um Yeah, are we doing it on the issues of the day? It's easy to believe the Bible on things that everyone agrees with, like uh, racism, or you know that's wrong, or slavery um, in the sort of modern day slavery, not the economic slavery of the first century, which we don't have anyway. But um, you know, abuse of women and stuff like that. Um, yeah, of course I believe the Bible on those issues. But what about the more um, issues of the day to do with relationships, to do with um, to do with uh, identity our identity is not based on who we what we do it's based on what jesus has done for us um but also in other areas of identity uh, depending on the age you're at and uh, who you're talking to um and and be gentle about that but it's what the bible says we've got to stick with the bible uh, jesus is the only way that might be one thing that also is the is another issue um are we sh uh, committed to sharing the bible so this might be um, in, evan in evangelism. 
So it could be asking people to read the Bible. And the thing is, most people have never um, read it as adults. And, and most people, when they're asked, um, in my experience, and I've not asked hundreds, they, they usually say, yeah, I'm interested. And it's another thing to get them to actually do it. But when they do it, they actually quite like doing it. Uh, it's, and it's, it's actually quite an easy thing because they just read Mark's gospel. And they um, I just say, what do you think of what Jesus said there? And it's not what I think. It's what Jesus said that's um, being looked at. So are we doing that? Asking people to read the Bible, um, encouraging our church to be Bible-based um, um, in what we what we proclaim, and so actually, it is really important to have Bible verses said at, um, um, not just on Sundays in gr or, or groups, but um, but at events. It's really important. Um, and I would say when we do that, expect opposition as well as belief. Um, and uh, Axe is laying that thick on for us, isn't it? There will be opposition. Um, that's what will happen. And Jesus said it would happen. Um, it's what happens. It's what's always happened. Expect opposition as well as belief. Um, and that's and um, that's why we do it, isn't it? For belief. That's the wonderful thing. We want people to believe in Jesus. And we can't have belief in salvation, I don't think, without a bit of opposition. So that's what's that's what's going to happen. There's going to be a mixed response, and um, I think that's what this passage is saying. So maybe uh, get the get the try and get those things across. Possibly what I what I'd be tempted to do if I was doing this with children, and young people is I, I would I'd probably model this out. I just kind of let, let's go through what happened. They got they got to Thessalonica, and they um, they Paul proved that Jesus is the person that we need to believe in, and maybe get them to look up these two passages, give them page numbers, or whatever, and. Um, there may be other ones you want to look at as well, but I suggest those two are the main ones and um, the, the easiest ones and say, yep, yeah, OK, yep, yeah, we believe Jesus really is for us. He's died on the cross for our sins. Tick. And um, yeah. And um, and then, yeah, you could point out the opposition if you wanted to, but you could just stick with um, this belief and examining the scripture as a priority. You could bring some Bible notes um, to help. Some of the kids and young people think, yeah, you could do this. Actually, you could use these notes to help read the Bible um, daily and, and to, to, to know what to believe in a world that's where we're throwing all kinds of ideas. Right. That's enough from me. I'm going to stop there and uh, let me pray. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you did in Thessalonica and Berea through Paul, through your scriptures that you've given your people. And you still continue to do those things. You tend, you've used... Um, people's faithful proclamation of the bible to bring people to faith to bring us to faith we thank you for that uh, we also conscious that there's an opposition as well when the bible is opened and uh, lord we pray that you'd help us to be um not surprised when that happens help us to be committed to scripture ourselves and also in what we do and lord we pray that you would indeed save many many different people through your word and through our church amen